Yeah, so welcome to our church service. If you are new, if you are following us uh, through the internet, please do feel extra welcome. Uh, we are here at the uh, the church. Uh, we are thinking about the uh, restrictions, so we are sitting every other row, and uh, we keep uh, two seats or two meters between two groups of people. It's so great to worship God and to be gathered in His presence. Let me start with reading uh, Matthew 3, verse 13, because I believe that these words, they are uh, relevant for you and to me. And then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to stop him, saying, I need to be baptized of you, and you are coming to me. Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. So as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. Just like the father said to Jesus, He is my beloved son. The father is saying this to you now. You are my beloved daughter. You are my beloved son. This is how we come before his face this morning. We do not come to perform or to be judged, but we come into an open arm. We come here to worship Him and let His love uh, stream through our heart. So let us stand up and we open our heart for Him. Lord, we thank You and praise You because we can step into Your presence now and we can be close to You and You have welcomed us and with the words, You are my beloved son or daughter. I thank You that this may be the tone with which we lift our heart to worship you and, and to honor you in our worship songs. Come with your spirit, come with your presence, be in our midst, whether we are following you here or online, in Jesus' name.
We praise you and we leave everything behind us. We come forward to you. We praise you and we honor you from our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, because you are here in our midst. We worship you.
raise your voice to the Lord, sing a new song. You are worthy of our worship. Thank you, Jesus, because you are here in our midst. You want to meet every one of us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to do your work. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Nothing else. You are the center. We crown you as the king. We praise you, Lord, and worship you, Jesus.
and keep on open heaven. The streams from the, uh, the thrones of heaven. For more of you, God.
Herre, det är vår längtan. Herre, vi vill se det. Lord, this is our longing. We want to see what you do. We want to be close to your heart. We thank you. We can come uh, into prayer the same tone as the worship. As we continue to worship you, we worship you, we praise you, we exhort you, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We praise you, Jesus. We love you. And we long to long for you, and our heart thirst for your water. We want to be close to you, we want to feel your heartbeat, we want to go where you go, and we pray that you will meet uh, visit us this year. You will come closer to us this year. You will meet us, meet our heart this year. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. That in a way, in the same way that you've met our heart, we pray that the gospel shall uh, reach out in the whole country and in the whole world. We believe you. We believe that the, uh, the 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 gospel will reach out even further in 2022 and change many people's lives. We pray that Jesus Christ, we lift up these suffering believers especially those Christians in the Middle East, in North Korea, and all the refugees. We pray that you will uh, inc embrace them now. You see them. You are close to them. You shall lead them on the right path, and you shall protect them. We bless all of our missionaries, and we pray for all of our churches and Bible schools over the whole world. How you Hold your hand above every one of those. Let your word do its work, and that they shall grow over the whole world in all, all of those places. 
especially today we want to lift up Kazakhstan we see what is happening now hold, hold your hand above the country protect the country that that no no more shall come to uh, injury or be hurt we pray that the religious uh, liberty shall continue that they will be able to celebrate their church service that these uh, courageous people shall continue to proclaim the gospel we bless those uh, believers and our our brothers and sisters in Kazakhstan we thank you for your protection and blessing uh, of all those who live in the land of Israel the Jews and Arabs alike we thank you because because your eyes are turned to Jerusalem to the Holy Land you will protect Israel you bless this country we wish Jerusalem peace this year and uh, we lift up these people who have uh, who are in great needs uh, in need of healing and uh, miracles we pray for those who are who have cancer we speak to cancer that you must bow before the name of Jesus we proclaim health life healing in Jesus name those who are sick with COVID we speak out health and life and this person who has got a uh, has got a stroke and uh, and the blood clot in the in this in the brain we pray for he health in this man's life we thank you Lord we pray for all these people that they will see your power and your strength at work you will embrace them where they are come with your uh, freedom and restoration and healing in Jesus name hallelujah thank you Jesus because you hear our prayer and you shall you will answer our prayers and the whole church says Amen. Isn't it great to see each other in the face? Those uh, you are familiar with, those uh, new ones, you are not going to, you mustn't uh, shake hands to greet them, but you can turn to the person around you and uh, wave at them. And uh, then uh, please be seated. And uh, wonderful worship, uh, thank you. Uh, musicians you have led us before the throne it's so great to be gathering uh, we are a church uh, together you and I we are together my name is Sebastian one of the pastors as I said in the beginning if you are he new here please do feel extra welcome you are always welcome to us Sundays uh, during our service and uh, this is announced that Pastor Yana was to preach but uh, but he has got COVID now, but he feels uh, okay. He and Sana are in quarantine. That's why he is not here. But they, of course, they greet us uh, to, uh, warmly to all of us. So now you have the joy of listening to Christian Pastor Christian Olker Yim speaking about the year of Jubilee. But before he comes, uh, we will have the opportunity to give today. We will take up today's uh, uh, collection. I'm thinking about the story, the story that often uh, uh, comes back to me uh, when Jesus was in the desert and he spoke to thousands of people. And uh, it was uh, getting late and the uh, disciples said that we have to give the people something to eat. And Jesus, uh, well, he is the son of God. He could have taken a stone and then turn it into uh, into bread he didn't do that well because he wanted always to wants always to connect with his uh, disciples and with you and me he wanted to see if there was anyone who was willing to give something so that there could be a connection and that with uh, between Jesus and that person so Andreas one of the disciples he found a boy with five bread and uh, two fish I don't know what that encounter was like when that boy came to Jesus and he said he laid what he had at in the hands of Jesus and Jesus took it and uh, and blessed it and uh, and 
it was uh, more than sufficient and uh, was able to feed thousands of people. You know that everything that we lay in the hands of God will be blessed. God wants to connect with you and me. He, that's how He ch has chosen to do. He seeks after heat, uh, the heart which is connected to Him. You and I, we cannot meet Him uh, on someone else's beha behalf, but we can make a path, we can connect with God so that His love can reach other people. And this is what we uh, are on fire for, we as a church. Well, this is about people, isn't it? That we can give God's love further down the line to other people. We want to uh, serve all generations. Uh, and you know that uh, we are on fire a little extra for the young people, for the, for the children. Uh, do you know that this is a group? We have a group that sun gathers every Sunday morning to pray for our children every Sunday morning, that all of them shall become disciples of the Lord. So let me read a testimony. So all the things that, uh, all the good things that God has done, we have gotten a lot of testimony from our youth conference. So listen to this. This is one of those who have written to uh, uh, and told us what God has done in his life. Thursday night, uh, when one of the preacher, uh, I, I don't remember what the preaching was about, but it was a, an encounter with God, and the presence is uh, undescribable. I lost my father in cancer, and the enormous sorrow is something that I carried all the time. But that evening, I felt I needed to, 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 to do this. I didn't dare. But God welcomed me uh, into this process to, to, to take off this, this burden. So this, is, this was the largest step that I've taken in my relationship to God when I said yes to, for the first time. I was so uh, close to God to let, let go of all this, all this sorrow, all the sorrow that ha happened in my life. That was so special and, uh, and uh, this has helped me to know that God can be with you in all of your life's uh, passages. We can give Jesus an applause. Uh, a young person that goes through a trauma, but uh, because of your prayers uh, and, uh, and your giving, he were, we were able to prepare a place, this, this sanctuary, so that uh, young people get to encounter God, just like this young man. And uh, this is what we get to do this year. We want to see uh, transformed lives. How do we do that? Well, we do this through connecting to God's heart in prayer as well as in giving. Think about uh, this little boy that gave his five fish, five bread and two fish. It doesn't look so much, but it made enormous difference. And what we do, we do this uh, uh, generously to God is going to make a great difference. So today, you and I, we've got the opportunity to make way for uh, an encounter with God to take place. So, what, so let us pray together, and uh, so that what we do, to, we give today, that we may see people uh, in front of us, that what we give today will mean a lot to the people and a lot of uh, people of many generations. Uh, Lord, I, uh, we come to you now. We thank you for all the good things that you did during 2021 and all those lives that we are able to uh, transform thanks uh, because of your grace. It is not we who meet God on someone's behalf, but we were there merely as a channel, as an opportunity. Now we reach out uh, 2022 that we will build God's kingdom that the young and old and, and everyone in between that they shall meet Jesus just like this little boy during uh, the conference and we pray for that as we give today uh, use these this money and make a way so that your love may reach straight into people's lives I pray for that and bless these gifts and multiply them meet needs of thousands of people in Jesus' name. Amen. So now uh, we 
give, uh, we give because we want to see people's lives changed. There are different ways uh, to give. You can give via Swish. You have the number uh, 916 um, And there is also a, so a bucket at the uh, exit uh, if you want to give uh, cash. And uh, if you are following us uh, via the internet, of course, you can give via Swish or you can go to our homepage, livitsuut.se, and you click on the right hand side, uh, giving, uh, give a gift. Okay, um, so we together, we can make a difference. God bless you. And then Pastor uh, Christian uh, is going to come and preach. Amen. Underbart. Amen. It's uh, great, great to praise God, great to give into God's kingdom. So as uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Yana cannot speak today, so you have to uh, put up with me. I hope it's all right. Uh, so I'm going to preach about uh, the year of Jubilee. So when I got to know this, so I, I came upon this word almost immediately. So I don't need to even think about this. So now I have got a word that I want to deliver to you. So this is a new year. I hope you have had a new year, a good new year. But now we go into this, this new year, and uh, it's always exciting for me personally for New Year's. Uh, well, this is, there's nothing uh, mythical uh, happening on the New Year's Eve, but uh, but but you uh, make an inventory and, uh, and so that you take an, another step into the new year. Uh, you have uh, new plans. Maybe you can, uh, you can ask uh, what does seek God uh, can mean. Now we are uh, in a new year and uh, that we are, setting, uh, we are starting this uh, prayer uh, campaign, this prayer period. Uh, you can get to know more about this uh, at the end of the meeting. Well, as we go into this uh, new year, we seek the Lord and we wonder, and uh, we try to connect uh, our heart with God's heart, and we wonder, God, what do you want to do this year? And uh, this happens as we, as, uh, as uh, the, all the things that happens in the media. Uh, no, it doesn't uh, say in, in the media that now th this is the year of uh, Jubilee. Instead, this uh, news of uh, war and everything else. So it's important, therefore, to say it doesn't matter what the world looks like. God's grace can be uh, released. So I'm going to stand here and speak about uh, 2022. I'm not going to say that this is going to be awesome. Uh, everything is going to be perfect. That's not what I'm saying. But I say that this can be a year of grace, year of jubilee. God will show His grace for us, over us, and through us this year. And a part of this, as Pastor Yana said, as he shared uh, uh, on New Year's Eve, he has a few uh, guidelines, he, uh, something that we can, just, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can agree upon, something that God is going to do, something that we can fix our eyes on. And one thing is to truly pray for our country. Our country needs a lot of prayers. At the same time, we see step by step, we see openings in this country which are actually new. And that's also uh, exciting. So Kai Gustav and I, we are often, uh, Katerina, uh, we, we were in uh, Armenia in uh, October. 
And uh, what was special was that Arthur Simonian, you know him, he was the pastor. He's the pastor. He said, no, you got a new pastor. This is great, he said. He said, I believe that, um, that you are going to have a pastor for your own church. And I thought, that's nothing uh, singular, but for just for this time, God has used you for nations for decades. Now I believe that now you have the grace for your own country. And that was uh, really great to hear. So this was very nice to hear indeed, uh, to have such confirmations. So prayer for the nation, a year of a lot, lot of worship, a lot of genuine worship for the Lord, and a year of building the house of Lord. And so we are building God's house here. This is our base. We make it strong. We are strong, we are fresh, we are, we are sound, and we are blessed here. Uh, so uh, the, the blessing doesn't have to be for us, for ourselves. It could be a blessing for Uppsala and uh, uh, the whole Sweden. And this is going to be a good year. And so I can say that from my personal experience in the latest, I, I feel this an upward uh, thermos, an upward wind, and uh, you see how things are moving in different uh, places. Uh, so some puzzle pieces are falling into places. I'm not saying everything is perfect. Uh, there's nothing that is uh, unblemished, but not, not like that at all. But, uh, but we have this direction. Well, and also this was a year with COVID, uh, but now uh, as we go into 2022, uh, I'm going to speak to you about this year of Jubilee. Let me tell you first about where this uh, phrase come from. There are a lot of places which speak about this year of Jubilee. One, one place is Isaiah 61. That's a wonderful piece of pr prophecy, by the way. And uh, so it's this prophecy that Jesus preached when he was, in his, when he was preaching his own uh, um, uh, synagogue. So this speaks about uh, the year of Jubilee. So let me just back up a bit. What is the year of Jubilee? So. So let's go back to the Old Testament, the year of Jubilee. Well, what happened? Well, so this is the construction, the decree that, so in the people, there are lots of people, lots of different life situation, and during uh, a few decades, some uh, fare well, some fare not so well, and so this is like a, a assurance so that people will not be com completely uh, uh, in the, the, uh, in, uh, uh, unbalanced. So it could be uh, maybe there, there's no money for a family. Uh, in the end, they just have to just uh, give away, sell their uh, field and sell themselves as slaves. So this is a personal tragedy. But then God decreed that uh, this year of Jubilee, a year of guarantee, so that up um, until this year, the year of Jubilee, so they see, okay, what happens this year? All the, all the slaves will be set free. They can turn, return to their own, their own inheritance. If you bought it for uh, 25 years ago or 10 years ago, they, get to give, they have to give this, this field back. And this is a very uh, big blessing. So it doesn't matter. It's uh, the year after Jubilee or the uh, 49 years after Jubilee. But they understand that if it's, uh, uh, they can, they, they understand that they will uh, receive freedom soon. And Jesus took this picture as he was reading this out of the, the Old Testament. He got this uh, uh, book roll, book scroll, and he found this uh, wonderful, wonderful word in Luke 4, uh, 18 and 19. So Jesus was standing in front of the people. He said, okay, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisons, prisoners. And uh, okay, they thought the people heard it. They thought that's a nice word. Okay. Uh, that's a very nice uh, Bible verse. And then the verse later today, he said, this is fulfilled for those of you who heard it, for, 
if you didn't hear it, you are not going to see it fulfilled. This is fulfilled. But uh, this is, sounds exciting. When Jesus came with a little exhortation, he said that everything just uh, went out of track and, uh, and uh, people wanted to throw him off the cliff. So they were ready to uh, actually to, to, uh, to, to, to kill Jesus. What are you talking about? But what did he do? He, he just uh, uh, read the promise. But even sometimes even the promises can be, can be provocative. Uh, a promise is either a promise or a threat. Uh, well, uh, well, a promise is that uh, I want to uh, change myself. Well, that's a wonderful, wonderful uh, promise. So he proclaimed the year of Jubilee, freedom for the prisoners, and uh, uh, view uh, uh, sight for the blind, and a year of Jubilee from the Lord. So, so Jesus was not a priest. He didn't. He does not have a trumpet. He actually he wasn't even care. He didn't even care how long it is. Was it from uh, the year of Jubilee? But. Uh, but Jesus was not part of the priest. He was not. It's not his job to take a trumpet and proclaim the year of jubilee. He just said that now this is the year of jubilee is here. The spirit of the Lord is here. He's, uh, he has anointed me. And Jesus was the year of jubilee. And and uh, and via Jesus uh, into Jesus uh, into the church. So. So now it's no longer the year of jubilee for every 50 years. It's uh, it's a year of jubilee for, uh, every year and for eternity. So if you are saved two years ago and you, if you struggle uh, against something, it's like, okay, now uh, I check it's actually 48 years uh, until the year of jubilee. No, Jesus says, I am here. I can proclaim the year of jubilee. And Paul said that, um, in Second Corinthians chapter six, uh, two, um, he said he talked about uh, this year of jubilee. He said, uh, "So as uh, co-workers, I exhort you to receive God's spirit, so that it will be of use." Well, God's spirit uh, is effective. Amen. And he says that he shall hear your prayers in the year of jubilee, in the year of grace. That's what he was talking about. The year, the, the year of grace, the year of jubilee. So I shall help you uh, on the day of salvation. Uh, so well, when, when does this day come? And Jesus, uh, Paul said, now, today is the day of salvation. Uh, thank you, I heard one amen somewhere. So today is the day of salvation. Today is the year of uh, 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 jubilee. This is the right time. So I proclaim the year of jubilee. It's it's a period, a period of grace. So we are living in this grace. That's why we we can say in front of this year that this is a year of grace. As we read, well, we can say it was 19. So you can say, oh, it's the year of uh, Jubilee, 1912. Uh, uh, people use this, uh, this uh, old concept. People hope for God, uh, these uh, years of Jubilee. But we can say that uh, 2022 instead. We can say 2022, that's the year of Jubilee. Because this is the year in which we can cry to God for this year. And, uh, and as we go into uh, the prayer period now, we are we are going to receive God's grace. Well, how do we do that? Well, it starts with the promise. I found the promise. I pray for the promise in faith, and I receive. I received the promise which was, which was made in faith. So there you have it. So we have. We are going to have three weeks of prayer, and there are going to be a lot of things. And there are going to be new prophetic words, and there are things that we will uh, proclaim in this year of uh, Jubilee. Amen. So let me just speak to you a little about uh, how does God's grace work, and uh, so that we can lay this foundation as we go into this year. And everything starts with the grace for you and me. 
So as we look at the word, the word grace, so what happens when you are pardoned? Well, you get something that you have not deserved. And well, I am in, if I am innocent, I don't need to be pardoned. I just need to uh, uh, demonstrate my innocence. But to be pardoned, that's when I, I do not deserve it. It, uh, it means that someone gives me something that I cannot pay for. I cannot pay for any of that. And this is this lays the foundation because, uh, well, we are God's children, our, and we need to be really uh, uh, certain in this salvation uh, and uh, rebirth and uh, and uh, righteousness. Uh, all of that ca came to you because of God's grace. Uh, word from grace, which is, I don't know how to say this in, in Greek exactly. How do you say it? Okay, but you, uh, charisma, well, for example, charismatic gift. Uh, so grace, this charis, can, can be interpreted as a gift. So grace means really gift. In, in Latin, it's clearer in Latin, gratia, that's grace. And you can hear, oh, okay, that's of course, that, that means, uh, that means uh, uh, gratis, uh, for free. Okay, so uh, gratis means, uh, can be great, and also can be, well, and also maybe things that you get for free, may, may, they are not as, uh, as great, they are great for two minutes, well, because they're cheap. But uh, as we speak about God's grace, we are not talking about the cheap grace. It's e enormously expensive. Someone has to pay the price. And uh, it was an enormous price. And uh, as we read a little bit about uh, Psalm 49, uh, so, uh, for, uh, when you gather money in a, in a heap, and uh, still, that even though they heaped up money, uh, it, they are not able to pay for their own salvation. It doesn't matter how much money they had, but it's written that the Lord shall release me, and uh, we cannot pay this price. And uh, Jesus paid it. And what happened? Well, as we give uh, through, uh, receive God's uh, grace uh, in Russian, it means it says regrets. It means gratitude. So the only thing I can do is to show gratitude. I can say, oh, I can't say, oh, how, look how great I am. Uh, no, I have nothing to boast about. Uh, we can boast about the Lord. I, we can say, yeah, Jesus, I don't know how you can do that, but I can only thank you. In Russian, it's the same thing, uh, uh, whatever he said. Uh, it's, it means uh, gratitude. Uh, so gratitude comes because I got something I didn't deserve. When, when you, you can thank people when you get your check, but you can do that, but it's not something that you do like, oh, thank you. But uh, well, you can say that thank you for the work, or, or that's all, or, or great. It's a, it's a reciprocal uh, gesture of gratitude. But you, can't, you wouldn't say that, I don't deserve this, oh, thank you. So this is the foundation of uh, our life with the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 2, it's written that in verse 4, so when we were still, uh, he made us alive with Jesus even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God has raised us up with Jesus and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Jesus Christ, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. This is, this is uh, uh, worth a, a whole hour's uh, study. So we were dead in our transgressions, transgressions, but He has saved us. He has raised us. He has set us in the kingdom, the, the realm of king, uh, the heavens. This is uh, mind blowing. But I've played, and He said, I've placed you so that my my grace will overwhelm you all the time. This. It's like you have got uh, Christmas Eve uh, every day of the year. This is worth an amen. So uh, later, of grace, you are saved. 
not by of yourself. God's grace is such that, not because of your deeds, so that no one can boast. So this is very clear uh, laid out. We our salvation is nothing to do with what I could achieve. I am in the bottom of a deep, uh, uh, deep uh, abyss. When I try to uh, climb up, I break my nails. Uh, there's no way I could take myself out of it. And uh, this is what salvation is about. Jesus lifted us up out of this cavern, and uh, and written in Psalm 40, he said, he he pulled me out of this deep cavern. He's placed my feet on fast ground, so on firm ground. So this is what salvation. He has placed my feet upon firm ground. This is great, and this is only. Due to God's grace, but how can I? How, how can He do so much? Well, because He is He He is. So concerning uh, Kazakhstan, uh, we just read the, the 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 news. We have some contact with people uh, there. It's a, it's very difficult to contact. Uh, the country is kind of uh, closed, but we have got uh, contacts that somehow were able to get in. Uh, this is a very serious situation. The Christians are very worried because this is a, a state of emergency. A state of emergency. They can uh, uh, they can limit uh, the the freedom of the Christians. So let us continue to pray for this. But uh, Katerina and I, we lived there. Uh, uh, I remember some things that happened uh, then. So one of the Bible school uh, student, he was an Afghan veteran. He came to me and said that. Uh, you are my last hope, Christian. I mean, such a spiritual darkness. Everything goes back to the fact that I am a veteran in Afghanistan. So when they sent us, uh, our officers taught us to hate in one uh, in one instant. Uh, they taught us to hate the Afghans. So I needed to forgive. I need to forgive my officers. I was so filled with darkness. I cannot forgive, forgive those Afghans uh, w for what they did to our, to my, uh, to my uh, companion when they were uh, uh, when they were captured. He was he was in such a, uh, uh, in such despair. Uh, this is my last chance. I don't know what to do. He said, uh, I, rem I don't remember what I said to him, but we were there uh, in 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 the office and. Uh, I just proclaimed God's grace and what Jesus did. There is actually grace, and he could see that Jesus had taken all that away from him. He was able to forgive his officers. He was able to forgive those uh, Afghanistan resistance forces, and then we prayed. And he fell down on the floor. And after a few minutes, he came up and he said, "There are very few times when I see such such a such a." Happening, he was in such complete darkness, but he was completely changed. So, well, it's not because I I am such a great uh, person. Oh, no, I felt very helpless. How can I help? How could I help this boy? Um, but uh, but but that was the situation he was in. But a word from God, God's grace. Was able to transform his entire situation, or everything went back to the fact that Jesus saved us. He lifted us out of this uh, this cave cave of despair, and this is something that he has already done, not something that he is going to do. He has already proclaimed this for you and me. We have freedom. We have access to the grace which is written there. So. This is our starting point, and uh, we cannot uh, deserve God. But otherwise, it will be all, always about how can I do this? How can I reach this level? But God has not uh, asked you to, to to level up. He has already done it. So the next step, when you are saved, 
God wants you to be transformed. God wants me to be transformed. This has to do with discipleship. I come to faith as a child, and then I become the follower of Jesus. And then when I become the disciple of Jesus, and He wants to take me deeper and deeper to what I was created to be. So again, uh, talking about this this cave, God has already raised us, lifted us out of it. We don't need to to do it ourselves. This is our starting point. Uh, so let us uh, say uh, Jesus has already lifted you out of this prison, uh, pr prison cell. It's uh, also there's something that we need to do. Well, we are set free. We need. To, we are saved. But I still have these old prison clothes. Rune. He preached last year about uh, last uh, Sunday about the the lost uh, the prodigal son. It's a beautiful story. So what was the first thing that uh, that happened? It was not about uh, a lecture about how how bad he is he was behaving himself, but rather it was to give him new clothes. He got a mantle. Uh, he, Maybe the the nicest the mantle of the it's, it was not his mantle it was his father's but it's now it was now his. This is what happens when you and I we were saved we 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 tear off the old clothes. And and the father puts shoes on his feet. Well, the slaves don't have shoes. It's only the family members they have uh, shoes. So the, what the father was saying is that now you are a member of the family again, even though he, the son could not believe it, and he put a, a, a ring on his finger. So I have got a ring that b belonged to my grandfather. And uh, uh, at some point you could actually uh, seal a letter with this ring. So. Uh, so God didn't say that. Well, you are still my son, but you get to live in the garage. So this is what God does with you and me. Uh, as He has done it, we have a new life, new life to live, new way to live. And uh, well, this has to do with a transformed identity. It's so great that we in India we have in uh, India we have uh, uh, co-workers. So they have a very different background. They, they, he, they, he was cast, uh, casteless, but had they been uh, Hindus, they were they would be uh, casteless. So to be casteless, it means that you are rejected. So she uh, grew up uh, with that. She said, "I look, I should look like this. I'm not worth anything. I have no personal value." But she came to a Bible school several years ago. She she saw that actually I am a queen in God's family. That was her new identity. That was so fantastic. And uh, if you meet her again, you can see what a person she is. She has gone from castless to uh, to being uh, undervalued to a person of faith to a person that believes that he is the daughter. In, in a queen in God's family, and that was great to see. She would go to us to see how courageous she is. Uh, well, why is it that she could do all that she did? Well, it's because Yaba. She, I, we, I, we said to her, "If you want to be something in God's kingdom, we didn't say that you have to. Oh, you have to shape up. You have to." Uh, but rather, we said to her that you are already something. You are God's child. You are beautiful. You are great. And she started to believe in that. Oh, if this is true, uh, I think I have been passive. Then she gets to know God. Uh, so Katerina and I, we both uh, uh, we both know her. Uh, so she she works in uh, Indian children. What did she? She was one of the leaders uh, in this Indian children work, uh, that work in the in this um, in those schools uh, amongst the slum. So it started with a new view of herself. So it uh, you can come from all sorts of backgrounds uh, with more uh, some some better, some worse. Uh, doesn't matter. We all need God's grace. So what happens then? The, so this is my next point. Uh, 
Well, I am not saved of uh, of uh, of my deeds. Uh, I'm saved of grace. Then I don't need to do anything. I can sit in my uh, apartment and just play guitar. No, that's not how it works. It doesn't work like this. It works like this. You are God's child. Amen. But, but God wants to do something, not just for us, but in us. Not just for us, but in us. And uh, I can promise you, this is this. This takes uh, more than five minutes. For me, it took seven minutes. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know how does it work in in heaven. How does this uh, process is kicked off? But uh, but I, I grew. I I mature. I am sanctified. I have to put aside things. Then I receive things from the Lord. This is a very important part of my Christian life. I can't just say that, oh, I'm saved five years ago, and I play uh, video games and the computer uh, guitar. If we all do this, uh, Jesus is going to take a lot longer to, before he comes back. So Titus, uh, Paul wrote to Titus, uh, it was a, it's a nice uh, verse. So because when we speak about sanctification, I heard this. Uh, uh, Thirty years ago, uh, I heard this teaching, which was just uh, uh, remarkable. So I have got a few friends who were in this situation. Uh, well, they was this was saying, "There's no uh, condemnation for those who are in Christ." Okay, that's good so far. All right, yeah, that's true. That's right. But if you have condemnation, then you are not in Christ. Oh. Uh, that was a dangerous uh, piece of preaching. So, so uh, it doesn't mean more uh, spiritual uh, spiritual freedom. It means that you're constantly in need of more sanctification. Uh, it's all good, but it's not good when you are sitting uh, in the prison cell and trying to uh, climb up with your nails. Uh, you cannot take yourself out of it uh, because the the. You have not understood the prerequisite. He, uh, Paul said to uh, the Galatians, says, "Hello, Galatians. Are you stupid? It's about God's grace. So stop trying. Live in spirit, and then you shall be. You shall get get rid of all the, those problems that you cannot uh, resolve in your own strength." If you try to resolve problems in your own strength, you will know that. That's why to be pardoned, or to be proclaimed righteous, this is the starting point of our new life. So that I'm no longer uh, uh, me anymore. So I used to keep a diary, uh, and I was saved. I found this uh, diary. I had two reactions. Yes, I remember this. I remember this, but the other re reaction is, uh, "That's not me." But I was there. I'm. I'm. But okay. And I was. I had such uh, in, inner con conflict. I have such a feeling of inner conflict. I thought, "This is not me anymore." No, not me anymore. I felt okay. Yes, I understand now. I'm born again. That person has gone through a transformation. He is born again. He's got a new heart, and that's this is the the uh, this is the starting point of your salvation. And then it's written, the grace is revealed. Uh, so that we are then uh, up up uh, brought up to say no to uh, unrighteousness. And as we turn, uh, as we wait upon the salvation. That Jesus was to uh, is to uh, set, uh, uh, appear in glory. He has cleansed us from all our unrighteousness and filled us with the passion to do uh, uh, great deeds. So God's grace is such that we don't want to do those bad things uh, anymore. And when we speak about uh, grace, well. God, we we say, oh, God cannot be angry. But no, of course, God can be angry. He can. Yeah, uh, this can be uh, not so good for you. But uh, God can be strict with us. Why? Well, because He is good. 
if Christian, if you continue to do that, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have a taste of it. So my pr parents used to. Uh, my my parents said to me, "Don't put your finger in the in the socket, in the wall. If I do it, if if you know you know how you know what happened when I did it again? Well, it hurts. So because God wants to save us from all that, God God helps us and tries to bring us up in uh, uh, away from our old lifestyle, and then and and to raise uh, to to uh, revive this this." Uh, a passion in us, not uh, some kind of a desperation in order to please God, but it's about grace now. It's about grace, and I want to serve God. It's because of that. So lastly, uh, the anointing. So the first two points were about what God does in us. Now it's about God wants to do uh, through us. It's uh, very fascinating as you read the Book of Acts. We cannot uh, go to all these words. So uh, I think uh, I thought I'm going to just read a few chapters, uh, verses from uh, the Book of Acts. It's very uh, encouraging. We can take those Bible verses to us. We can pray that this can happen in us and through us and through you and me. For example, in a uh, uh, Acts uh, 4:33. So the disciples received uh, great power to preach God's resurrection, and grace was over all of them. They were powerful. They were powerful preachers. And so why were they? Because well, God's grace was over them all. It was not because they are so good. Peter doesn't was wasn't powerful, but that's because God's grace was over them, and God's grace worked through them, and God's anointing worked through them. That's what made them powerful preachers. The word was not just the word; it was spirit, life. So, in chapter six, verse eight, uh, in the uh, Stephanos, uh, Stephen was uh, filled with uh, grace and power. So God's grace was not just that we got pardoned, but also that uh, it releases power in us. So we we prayed for different pray, uh, missions field. How can we do that? Well, that's because God's grace uh, uh, is over us in different periods, in different parts of the world, and uh, I believe that this is going to continue. So can, this is I'm thinking about this this. Uh, this Bible verse, I was reminded of Vietnam. I have not been in Vietnam or started anything. We have contact with them. We trained them in, in Moscow, and, but, and they came back. They just continue to grow. So, so I just heard this update a few years ago. He said, now, he said we are now two, uh, 200, 200 churches where well, they continue to grow. That's because God's grace was uh, active uh, in them, effective in, uh, through them. So Runa is sitting here. He, he just said, "Amen." So, uh, so we were in his uh, office. He was teaching the Indians from his uh, office. I thought. So I thought I wondered if he needed some water, and so I went into his office. He told me that I got a word of knowledge for some. Uh, there's a woman who. There was even more uh, word of uh, knowledge, and uh, the gr grace, uh, 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 okay, anointing from an office can touch people in in Kakuta, uh, in in whole of in the whole of India. That's uh, that's uh, remarkable. So okay, let's let's pray for this uh, this week so that uh, great uh, grace and uh, anointing shall be over us. And then, and so, so after we after Jerusalem uh, and Barnabas, uh, uh, they they left Jerusalem into Judea, and uh, and uh, Barnabas, uh, it's written that what Barnabas said uh, what uh, God's grace has done, but it was God's grace has done that. Uh, he, so one planted, one watered, but it was God who gave growth. 
and uh, Barnabas continued uh, to preach full of faith and spirit and there was a large crowd that followed him and it was God's grace that started the new church and uh, created a growth and uh, led to this enormously uh, powerful uh, mission space to be able to reach that part of the world from that church and uh, this was a sending church this is where so, so the f last thing I want to read is uh, Acts 14 26 Paul and Barnabas were set aside for the task uh, given by God now that they have come back from their first trip and now they set off again it was Paul and Silas and uh, I remember 1989 so it was a long time ago the dinosaurs were even uh, roaming the earth uh, we got this mandate this calling about uh, Russian missions it was uh, unbelievable uh, and uh, we had a gathering several had this vision so when I heard this I, I want to be a part of this and after this meeting, Uf Akaman told us about this. As, uh, he just came to me and said, Christy, are you going to be one of those 20 that we sent over there? But uh, I, I don't know whether it was uh, 20 or even more, but uh, people went out and preached. Uh, these are mostly just uh, laymen preachers. So my friend uh, Mikhail Lundin, we were uh, we worked together in this um, uh, furniture store and uh, we went there and preached together. He said to me that uh, I, I noticed that before and after that gathering uh, that um, there was a before and after. I, I noticed that something happened to you. What happened? Well, that's because we were connected to a heavenly mandate. Uh, it's, it's written in the, uh, in the Bible about the Great Commission. Um, if you have but uh, there's also this uh, another dimension when the Lord uh, releases his anointing for a special uh, specific part of the world for a specific period and as you step into it as you place yourself underneath this anointing and uh, then it's no longer me or uh, my, my spirituality that it is about it's I, I, I place myself underneath uh, the, 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 the umbrella of a church so my personal experience was that it was I'm so happy that I did it and it's very difficult to do without without the church so his reaction was that I noticed that something anointing there's a, your strength increased and that's why I have such a, such a joy this this uh, this year so we were 12 people who went out, uh, uh, some in uh, Uppsala, others in the whole of Sweden. Some of these are young people, they become uh, uh, preachers, uh, uh, church workers. So it, there's something about stepping into the anointing that God has uh, for certain regions. Uh, so if we go through our history, I've seen this in China, in Vietnam, uh, India. I travel a lot in, in Vietnam. We've seen this in the Middle East. I just experienced that this is on the move uh, more and more, uh, even in Sweden and in, in Europe. There can be new periods of grace and uh, that we're going to see even now we are reaching the uh, immigrants in a completely different way compared to a few years ago. Uh, Pastor Roberts told me that 250 people came from the Middle East, 20 were saved. After, we have 1,600 uh, Afghan, Afghans who heard the gospel and we have I, I believe that God is, has called us to Sweden's backyard too we have also prayed this is a signal to you and to us that the next the next missions field maybe is not on the other side of the earth but maybe here Uppsala and Europe or Sweden
。阿门。So let us go into a prayer period, and then we're going to finish with that. So God has called us up on the walls, and we're going to pray for for this year. We pray that this is going to be a year of grace. That uh, that uh, let us experience as we read the Book of Acts. We pray for the situations. We pray for Europe and pray for the whole world and the Ukraine too. So I was in Ukraine a few weeks ago. We were very close to the frontier. Now the Russians are amassed、uh, there. Can we pray? We pray.、Uh, <laughs> we pray that somehow just the Kazakhstan and the Ukraine could just sort of cancel each other, so that the Russians have no time for for both of them. So now 2022, it was to become a year of、uh, jubilee. Let's make sure that we are in the midst, in the midst of it, in the midst of、uh, a crisis. All these 1,600 Afghan Afghans. Well, how could we do that? Well, well, this. No, I'm not saying that we stop with Af Afghan、uh, <laughs> Afghanistan now.、Uh, so God has give,、uh, given us these openings. So in Zechariah 12, over the inhabitants of Jerusalem, I shall pour out、uh, uh, anointing. So let us pray that. Uh, in the coming weeks, and also let's make a marking for for the new year. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the salvation. We thank you for what you have done for us, and also what you've done in and through us. We we will grow, and we we shall return to the first love.、Uh, we shall grow deeper and, and more stronger, more mature, and we receive a heart. Which、uh, beats in in,、uh, in in harmony with yours. We pray for the sit situation in our own city, in our own country, that we will not sink into ourselves, but rather we shall that we can be ready. We can be filled with the passion to serve you and to minister to people. I pray for grace, and also as I've read.、Uh, That we pray that your grace shall come over our church, just like、uh, your spirit came over the churches in Jerusalem, and signs and wonders, not just、uh, from this platform, but rather it shall be, it shall be, it shall start from every member's life, where the, wherever they are, there shall be this uh, uh, new uh, chain reaction effect. There, sh that you will send your workers to the harvest field. You will give us your grace for this new year. Let us praise God.
Amen. Amen. What a wonderful preaching. Let's thank God for Pastor Christian and this message that he gave. It's so great. Uh, can we live in this year of grace? Let his grace uh, operate through us. Please uh, be seated. Uh, we want to say a few words about this prayer period that we have the grace to uh, to be a part of, and it's going to be very significant. Sima Hunkvist, could you just share some things uh, on your heart? My f wife and I, we have prayed uh, many years, so we pray uh, 21 days. So uh, about a year and a half ago, we were praying for the church, and uh, we would like to so we want to uh, announce this uh, morning prayer. We are going to have prayer morning and evening. So we have this prayer period. We have uh, also fast period. And I have not heard a lot of uh, preaching about uh, fasting. Let me just uh, uh, explain quickly what fasting is about. Well, prayer, well, this connects us to God. We are plugged into heaven. And uh, fasting, it's uh, it's about uh, pulling uh, uh, the, the the pulling the, the pulling out of the socket of the world, so that the connect from, uh, connection from this world disappears. Uh, so we, this is what we're going to do this these two weeks. So we're going to mm, we are going to meet 6:30, uh, also uh, seven o'clock uh, in the evening, and so for a month, 6:30 in the morning, and. Uh, and we spread out. We and we seek God uh, for a quarter of an hour, and then we gather uh, again to pray. To to, to pray, uh, God will speak to you. And uh, so I took another piece of uh, 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 wire. So as we come into this period, we shall come with this uh, this uh, this wire both for you and for you as individual members, because I believe that God truly has something for you. He's got a lot of things in his uh, workshop. So maybe, maybe you need, uh, if you are desperate, maybe you need that. This is a star jumper cable. And uh, so maybe this is your last straw. You have to just plug in this uh, jumper club uh, cable, and he's going to get you started. God has something fantastic for you. So just be a part, come and be a part uh, uh, during this prayer period. Think 6.30, Monday morning. So let us truly take this prayer period and connect, and and also and so pull out the plug. Uh, uh, so let's. We are going to send this uh, uh, via Zoom. Uh, we can also. We are also going to keep the distance on the balcony, and come even during the red days. Just come and seek God together. Um, uh, so, so the link of for this uh, Zoom link is uh, in our calendar. Just uh, click on our calendar, and uh, maybe if you have. Uh, uh, children in your family. Maybe it can be nice to have this this uh, in the background, this prayer in the background. So Runa spoke about uh, sp spoke about just getting connected where you are, and we can do this together as a church. And then the last thing I want to say is that the fasting. Well, you can fast in very many ways. We we read about uh, 
so I believe that the biggest we can do in fasting is to to do a social fasting. So during these uh, three weeks, I I need to close uh, throw this away somewhere. I've I've been watching this all too often and missed the things. So close down social media, so close down the telephone and the television, and uh, then. But uh, what if you, uh, you you are addicted? Well, seek God's kingdom, then you will see. So Simon and Elizabeth, they are going to do this for a month. So tonight, there's no prayer because we have. So, so from tomorrow, as you heard uh, from Simon, uh, 6:30 in the morning and also 7 o'clock uh, at uh, in the evening. So Monday, Friday in the morning, Monday to Thursday uh, in the evenings, and then next Sunday we gather for the church service again. You need to book your uh, your church uh, visit. So this. Uh, the inauguration uh, service for Pastor Yane will be uh, delayed, will be postponed, so that we can, so that we can gather all the church uh, together, and then as we go out, there's a cafeteria open. But let's think about uh, showing respect. Uh, we keep the distance even there. So, but in the end, let us stand up and let's receive God's blessing. The Lord bless for the week in front of us. So open your heart. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and give you his grace. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So God bless you if you are with us uh, online. So we pastors, we are here. If you want to have prayer, we keep the distance as well. Over there, there's a welcomes counter. Should you have questions about membership, home groups, so forth, uh, please do go there. Thank you.